you feel like uh, like being on the spectrum that you have to prove yourself, or is oh like, yeah, oh is, yeah, does oh, that come my from goodness, in- yes, does every come- day, day, dude. Yeah. It's all it's a beauty and it's a big frustration in the spectrum world, but to me, it's a beauty because it just motivates you more and more and more and more. I mean, it's a pain because you gotta work a little extra hard. You don't want to do that some days, but most days you have to, and just to show that you are a hard worker and. Dang, you're here like this guy is dude does have something i shouldn't have done what i shouldn't have judged that book by his cover welcome to the crossing it off podcast where each episode we share the stories of individuals that are living out their bucket slash life goal list I am your host, Roger Williams, and through hearing our guests' adventures, my goal is that you will find encouragement and empowerment to add and cross items off of your list. So at this time, I want to welcome my guest, Sam Mitchell. Sam is a podcaster and a fierce autism advocate. Sam, welcome to the show. Hey, thanks for having me on, man. Appreciate it. Good to be here. I am so glad that you've uh, chosen to do this, and I'm excited for this conversation. So what was the, the item you had crossed off your list? Item was probably me, Mick Foley, and Temple Grandin. Great. So you, you had these uh, famous people for you on your podcast. You interviewed them on your podcast. Before we talk about those those guests that you had on the show, describe your podcast. What was what the theme? Why did you start it? And what are your long-term goals for the show? Sure. So it's called Autism Rocks and Rolls. It's about autism and how we cope with daily struggles that you may or may not understand. Um, I've had the big guests on the show that we'll talk about, Temple Grandin and Mick Foley. Mm -hmm. But I also, it's about trying to change the stigma of autism and explain the emotional side of autism to show that people on the spectrum are not broken and they don't need to be fixed. There's no need for... pettiness there's nothing to be sorry about so the the audience would be who who do you think the audience is for is it parents okay. people on the spectrum okay. special education teachers for sure and any doctor honestly who who tries to treat the autism as bad and he's like it's a threat in reality it's a gift nice excellent i love it what are your long-term goals for the show well, I'm not 100% sure, so I always tell people, ask me in five years, and we'll talk again, because I'm taking this podcast one day at a time, Yeah, you know, honestly, because I want to see where it takes me. I'm letting the podcast control me a little bit. You are currently college-age student, I'm like, yep. and you go, where do you go? Uh, I've been taking Bloomington, Indiana. Okay, great, Bloomington. So so let's talk about these two, the two famous people, the celebrities that you have in the show, one was Mick Foley's professional wrestler and one uh, Temple Graden. First off, let's talk about Mick. So describe to the listeners who Mick is if they don't know who Mick is. Sure. Mick Foley is probably the best professional wrestler of all time. That's just <laughs> my opinion. Right. But he's the hardcore right. legend, a 2013 WWE Hall of Famer, an 11-time tag team champion, and a four-time WWE champion. He He's played as Mick himself, Mick Foley. He's also mm-hmm. wrestled as his characters, Mankind, who is a deranged, who is a masked crazy lunatic, Cactus Jack, who is an unmasked crazy lunatic, <laughs> That's a good way and to Dude Love, it. who is a fun, lovey, hippie type character. And so why did you want Mick to be on your show? What was important to have Mick there? Well, first of all, we kind of already knew him. We kind of met him at a toy store for a meet and greet, and mm-hmm indianapolis and he was a fun guy i thought great crossed off the list but then i learned down the road he has a son the spectrum actually he's an adult now so that's kind of cool but um what was cool is i got i got surprised through another a and c wrestling podcast and we talked to him and he agreed to be on the show and i had three minutes with him but we were able to do it that's great um what and i met him at the comedy attic in bloomington indiana where he actually recognized me was the funny part. That's cool. Yeah. Mick also does stand up comedy on the side. Um, so, so what did you, what did you actually do to get Mick on the show? Was it just through those meetings or was there something you had to do or the people you had it was, to contact? It was with? through those meetings really, but there was also, we had like go through his booking agent and okay. work out, work out kink the fixes, I guess, because we are not fun fact. His booking daughter is Jake, the snake Robert's daughter. Okay. 
Yeah. So um, did you get the that information from him or did you find it somewhere? I, I learned it from him. Okay, good. So he helped out in that process. What was the one question you asked Mick that was most important for you to ask him on the show? Why did he Why did he hop off the Why did he go back on the hell in a cell again? <laughs> yeah, he's he's famous or infamous for falling. I think it was like 16, 18 feet off of a an encaged yeah, cell. I don't get my funny. The thing I want to ask him is why in the crap would you go up there again? Okay, I mean I get the fact that going out there once, woohoo, ta da good trick but again now you're just being i sometimes i wonder if you were an idiot <laughs> yeah going to the well twice sometimes is that the question you would have uh that you thought of asking him afterwards that you missed out and no i i didn't ask him after i did that was oh, the you did. question okay. i asked him oh nice what would you have asked him uh after you had the interview and you thought it back in your head was there something that you would have asked him if you had the chance well definitely i would want to ask him I should have asked him what his initial thoughts were when he learned that his son had autism. Yeah, that's a great question. Very interesting. Is there anything else you want to talk about, Mick, in that interview? Was was there anything special well, about it? Well, he we definitely got him a shirt. It was the cool part, but mm-hmm, the contact mm-hmm. was really the another key point. We got him a shirt. We are now friends. I mean, we have his email, and it, he's just a great guy around. I mean, he's one of you. He's the ultimate underdog in life. Interesting. So, so about Temple. Um, describe her and uh, why you want a temple to be on the show. Well, first of all, I'll describe her one word dry. Mm-hmm. Um, but um, I didn't want her on the show. My mom wanted her really on the show. So I didn't know who she was really until I got introduced by her. And I thought, hmm, okay, this is really cool. I mean, my mom loves Temple Grandin. I like Temple Grandin. I think she's, an, a, she's awesome. She knows her stuff. She, she knows what her stuff is, but she visually thinks in pictures and I don't, I think in words. Okay. And, and what is she most known for? If someone doesn't know who she changing is changing the cattle industry, she's okay. very agriculture based. She's changed a lot of um, agriculture and she's known for helping out the autistic world in different ways and helped others. So how did you get temple to be on your show? Well, that was through email. I was like, yeah, let's find the I found I found on top ten most um, inspirational people with autism. Mm-hmm. Temple was number one, right. and I thought, yeah, we probably won't get her, but let's email her. What the heck? So we did. <laughs> waited for a while, it didn't happen. Well, it turns out while we were waiting for something, we got an email that says um, Temple Grandin, and we thought, okay. And then she called us on the cell phone and we arranged it, and ta-da, it happened. That is awesome. I'll ask you the same things I asked about Mick. So. Um, what was the, what was their question that you wanted to ask her? You wanted to make sure certainly that when she was on the show that you got to ask her. Well, I guess one, I don't know really with that, but I guess I should have, why I should have asked her is why you're so dry. <laughs> and what do you think the answer would have been? Just because that's the way I am. Yeah. And then maybe there might've been an elaborate part to the answer. What was, what were some of the things that were special about that interview for you? Uh, the special part of the interview was it got a lot of hit, hits, surprisingly, but also you can learn, like, not just thinking in pictures. We also learned that Temple Grandin doesn't understand chit chat. She is a down type business person. So having a just a regular conversation would be rough. How did yeah. you, you prepare for that interview then? Did you I just talked about what she wanted to talk about and okay. went with her gut, went with her. Nice. Well, like her, got in her mind a little bit. You talked about Mick and the relationship that you've kind of maintained with him. What has that been like for for either of those people maintaining that relationship, and what does it look like for you? It's it's a it's a friendship. I mean, we try not to bother him out of privacy, and I mm. would agree with that as well. But sure. we'll contact him and say, "Hey, man, how you doing? You know, how's life been for you? What you been up to?" And just like we're <laughs> you know, acquaintances and friends. And what's that like with Temple? Oh, it's great. Um, she's helped. She gave me some advice and motivational speaking. Okay. But um, she also just, you know, just tells about her job. And I just say really, really cool. And we go along with it. And sometimes I'll talk about my animal knowledge that I rarely know. And it, it goes well. Are there any other famous people on your list of guests you'd like to have on your show? Uh, well... There's a lot, but I guess a couple would be either 
Eminem. Okay. Or um, Gordon Ramsay. Okay, let's start with M. Why Eminem? He's autistic and his raps are cool as hell. Okay, there you go. I, I totally agree. Especially, I mean, after his, I mean, as I, I could feel relatable. I'm more like, I have to talk to this guy, you know? And and why Gordon Ramsay? He has a savage mouth and I love it personally. I'm one of the rare <laughs> people who love it. But I did not, what I did not know was I threw a gold cast video of his traumatic childhood and I want to ask him about that and just, you know, like explain to him, you know, I've been through that tough times too. And, you know, I'm, I guess, People have experienced a soft side of Ramsey, and it's a different experience. And he's just what I, for one of the nicest guys alive, believe it or not. Even though he seems kind of cranky and villainous, he's actually a big teddy bear when you get him outside the kitchen. There's there's this chance when you meet your idols, right? Um, like I was able to meet Jack Johnson, who's a musician, who I really have some respect for. And think, you know, he's a great guy, but I don't know that until I actually meet him. Did you have concerns before you met either uh, Temple or Mick that you that they might be not good people or not nice? And how do you prepare for that before? Uh, Mick, Mick, no. Mm -hmm. Um, Temple, I didn't know her real well at the at the time, so I just went with that with an open mind. But I know one day I'll probably get like this arrogant celebrity but you know mm -hmm. i have an arrogant side of me too so i can play along with it as well nice kind of gotta in the interview you gotta match their personality yeah, to your person i gotta make you gotta be that you gotta be them in a little in a you gotta be them for as long as you can ha handle them i guess match that energy that they put out yeah regardless of who it is what's the what's the next thing on your bucket list or goal list that you you were gonna cross off. What's something well, po podcastly is the day at a time as I mentioned earlier. But as far as in light, it's skydiving, bunny jumping, experiencing all of these wonderful thrills. Okay, what's uh, what's it gonna take to get you skydiving? Find a way to convince my mom to hop out of it. That find a way to convince my mom that she'll let me out, hop out of an airplane. Okay. But also yeah. probably have to go on my own, maybe. Yeah, when um, I can. But you'll do a tandem, right? You won't do it by yourself. You'll do a tandem jump. Oh, yeah. If I have to, I will. But yeah. if I'm by myself, I don't mind. It's great. <laughs> this, is, this is mine, man. What, why is that? What, what, is about, what is it about those things, those thrill, those thrill seeking heights. things? I'm a big buddy. I'm a big fan of heights. I've always been. Like, I just want to jump off things. Like, I think I've always been like that since I was a little kid. So, really, it's the heights of budgie jumping and feeling the wind in the face. And really just, you know, not like falling, but being having the fun and saying bravery, courage, because I'm trying to prove something. I mean, when you got when you're on the spectrum, you got to prove something each time. And one of the ways I prove something is questioning my sanity is one way. But another way is doing these crazy, you know, flying off the air, jumping out of the airplane. Do you feel like uh, like being on the spectrum that you have to prove yourself or is Oh, is yeah. Oh does, yeah! Does oh that come my from goodness! Inside? Yes, does every come... dang day, dude. Yeah. It's all, it's a beauty and it's a big frustration in the spectrum world. But to me, it's a beauty because it just motivates you more and more and more and more. I mean, it's a pain because you got to work a little extra hard. You don't want to do that some days, but most days you have to. And just to show that you're a hard worker and dang, you're here. Like this guy is dude does have something. I shouldn't have done what I shouldn't have judge that book by his cover hmm. do you think it's do you think the pressure you feel is more from yourself or do you think it's more from the people around you society let's put it this way the people put the pressure on me to where it leads to the pressure on myself and what are some of the things besides what are some of the things you do besides doing grand things to prove yourself what are the daily things that you do to kind of combat that those feelings Just showing that i'm here and showing that i can make it by going to college each day it's a life skill. I mean, I haven't driven yet, but I'm going to practice driving nice. sometimes. That's a way of proving yourself. Showing the talents that I do have that sometimes the site does not appreciate. That's a way of showing. And there's other other ways that I cannot think of right now at the moment. And all those things, do you feel more confident when you do those things? Do you feel? Oh, yeah. I'm glad to hear that. What is one thing on your bucket list or on your list that has nothing to do with podcasts or nothing to do with um, high energy, dropping off, falling off things? What would be something that is different than those than those two things? Wow. Uh, that's first of all, traveling. I mean, I've always 
have certain places to travel, but one that I can think of right now is um, going to um, probably, I don't know, there's a lot of places I've always wanted to go. Mm -hmm. So probably one of the places I can think, probably one of the places I know I want to go sometime is D.C., Again, but not. I took. I went to DC once with a class uh-huh. trip, oh, nice. but yeah. it was kind of like you know scheduled and kind of rushed. I don't. I don't experience that again. And I'm with my mother, who's a teacher, but we had to rush it. But I want to enjoy it with just my mother, and on our terms, you know, like mm-hmm. on our time. And why, why DC? This the historic man. I mean, I'm a I'm a lifelong learner, and yeah, one of my favorite schools and subject subject is history museums are probably the most fun way to learn period that's why i love museums always been like that and i've heard like just the weather on the summertime man i mean you can't ask for what anything let you got life learn you got museums in dc great weather Mm -hmm. probably hopefully some friendly people you're close to the government you feel kind of safe yeah, DC is a DC is a great city, and because you're from Indiana, I don't know if you know this or not, but the same gentleman that designed Washington DC also designed downtown Indianapolis. So wow. a, a very interesting uh, connection there. But I I love DC too. I think it's a great city. I've been there multiple times, and it is one of the best places to go to museums. They're almost like amusement yeah. parks in themselves there. So yeah, and I guess another bucket list is when i die is probably find the full meaning of happiness whenever that whenever that will be which i don't even know what that means i can't give you the definition of happiness go ahead do it i can't i said i can't oh you can't give it okay because i don't know what it is yet but i want i so so desperately want to find that definition that's probably individualized for everybody right right. and then i guess the final one you can think of is for five minutes it's gonna sound kind of crazy but not wrestling, but just being in a wrestling ring for like a few minutes. I mean, that is one big dream. I don't have to, if you want, if you mean to wrestle, that's an extra bonus, but just to <laughs> stay in the squared circle, uh-huh. that'd be wonderful for just a couple minutes, man. I've always uh, had kind of being a referee on my list for a wrestling match. I don't want to wrestle. I'm too old for that. And physically that's not, not in my, my nature, but um being a ref, I think, would be a total a total blast. I could do a referee too. I think I I think I aced that in the hole myself. Nice, Sam. Where can um, my listeners find more information about you, part you and your podcast and your activism work? Yeah, so you can find me on your favorite media platform, with the exception of Buzzsprout and Anchor. Mm-hmm. And my website, though, autismrocksmurls.com has everything, so, including some of the episodes and. The services I offer and all the advo- advo- advocacy work I do. Can you tell us about that advocacy work? What What are some of the things you do to advocate for besides your podcast for autism? Well, um, I've done a lot of events. I participated in events such as Cast for Kids, where people with hidden abilities or disabilities go fishing, and I've participated in that. Um, I there's a place uh, there's a place that sponsors me called Pals, where they help youth and autistic adults really Mm -hmm. for anyone who has a challenge right by showing them horse lessons i got to ride a horse lesson for those who maybe either cannot or written a horse for those who have a tough time or even scared animals Mm -hmm. don't know but i've also i think and i'm gonna i've done some speaking engagements i've spoken to iu health nurses and all that i'm gonna speak to hopefully Things go according to plan. I'm going to speak in Broken Arrows, Oklahoma, in the February 2022. Nice. What what group is you, are you speaking to? Uh, it's in the rural. What is it? I think it's like the rural national autism conference or something like that. Okay, that's big stuff. Oh yeah. Does that make you feel nervous or are you excited <sighs> about that? No, nah. I don't. I don't get nervous when I speak on stage anymore because I when the, the the, the trick is basically don't care what others think of you in the in the midst mm-hmm. of being on stage like it's just fully you having a conversation it's pretty easy i appreciate um you coming and doing this for sure and uh i will put all those uh, website links in the show notes so that folks can just click those and have straight access to them. Uh, sam thank you so much for being here and i wish you all the best especially on your work uh, as far as being an advocate i think that's awesome
Of course, it's good. It was good to be here. Thank you for having me on again. As a reminder to our listeners, in this episode's show notes, you will find links to learn more about this week's guests and information on how you can cross this item off of your list. You can follow my adventures of crossing items off my bucket list on Instagram and Facebook, and as always, new episodes of this podcast are available to stream every Friday morning. We will meet you here next week, and until then, keep living out your list.